Welcome to another Unwinding with Fiber and Fabric. I woke up this morning to chilly temperatures and every indication that autumn has finally arrived, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. Our leaves are changing colors and beginning to fall. Some of my friends in more Northern climates are telling me that they've awoken to frost on the ground. Even some have had a dusting of snow. And with all of that in mind, that tells me it's time to get out our scarves and our hats, our mittens and our socks, all in preparation for the colder temperatures that are going to arrive sooner than later. <laughs> I do love wooly knits and woven season. I love wearing them. I love making them. What I especially like is the ones that we can make out of one skeins that have been tossed into our stash after we have spun up some yarn without any real project in mind, but just for the joy of spinning. And so with that in mind, earlier in the week, maybe last week, I went down into my stash and I pulled out a skein of yarn and I made this scarf. It was no pattern that I followed. I just cast on some stitches, did a simple yarn over, knit two together, lace-ish, pattern and just saw what the scar uh, the skein could make. It's given me some ideas for some other projects that I'd like to make. But for now, I want to bring to you a spinning project that hopefully will inspire you to get out your woolly fibers, maybe some dye and play around with a little bit of color, play around with a little bit of texture and create a skein that you might also be able to use in a one skein wonder. After this short little discussion and, um, and uh, on the spinning of this skein, I'll come back with the finished skein of yarn and wrap up this video. I'll see you again in just a moment. And I hope you are inspired by what is to follow. <laughs> The other day as I was reading some different posts in, in social media, I ran, uh, I ran across a person who was asking about achieving a bit of a, uh, a, a, a tweedy look, a textured tweedy look by adding silk or cotton noils and naps into their spinning project. And they were, they were talking about, you know, that they'd been sold a bag of the, um, the, 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 the neps, I guess you could say, I'm not sure if they were sold a bag, cotton neps, wool neps, or, um, or silk. And I thought, you know, I've done that. I've, I've blended it. Um, I've added it in to, and, and have enjoyed the look. So I thought, you know, it's been a while since I've done that though. Um, it's been actually quite a few years since I've done that. So I thought, what a perfect idea for a video. So yesterday, while the rain was coming down heavily, I dyed up some fiber. <laughs> now, back in the days when I lived in Colorado, dyeing up fiber and steaming up the house was something even on rainy days was a nice thing because it was the climate was so dry where we lived and so um it wasn't uncomfortable <laughs> dyeing up fiber and steaming up the house here in virginia especially when it's raining outside is a whole nother um level of humidity <laughs> In fact, it was so humid that I knew the only way I was going to be able to get my fiber to dry so that I could spin it in time to, to make a video was to bring a dehumidifier into the room <laughs> where the fiber was sitting under a fan. So I come today to do this so grateful that it's not raining anymore. Happy that the humidity inside the house has dropped down to a much more um, <laughs> comfortable level. And I have dry fiber. So <clears throat> I have some um, photos and I, I, um, I'll put those up, whoops, this side, I always get it backwards. I'll put these photos up showing the dyeing process. When I dye fiber, most of the time I dye fiber without any hope of ever reproducing the effect. Um, 
I like the randomness of, of, of the dyeing process that I do. I like that each, each skein, each batch, each, um, project is, it, it has variables in it. It's a little bit different. It's unique. And this, this was definitely a case where that's what I was trying to specifically achieve. So I took, I took six ounces, uh, about 170 grams of, uh, white, uh, wool. I suspect it's CVM because that's the majority of the fibers I have. It could be, um, a Coriadel, but I'm really thinking it's CVM, especially as I, um, got into some of the, the finer sections, um, that I was working with. It has the same um, hand and feel and texture and lock structure that I'm used to with my CVMs. Not to mention I had a lot more ability to buy CVM than Coriadel when I was buying it uh, a number of years ago. So I took the six ounces of white wool and then I took, oh, about six grams of silk, um, nap, silk noil, um, in essence, the waste product. Um, and I, 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 I was, I was dying it in each of the, the little batches in, um, I was going to do four total colors. As it turns out, when I put one of the colors in with the silk, I had way too much dye for the amount of silk. So, not wanting to be wasteful and for the fact that I ended up with a much darker color than I had anticipated or planned on having, I ended up actually doing another, um, quick handful of the silk to help exhaust some of the, um, the dark green. And I ended up, um, I ended up getting some beautiful colors, but if we, if we look at the, the photos that I keep putting up, the basic process is I mixed up some dye. I pre-soaked my fibers in a um, vinegar and water um, solution. Once they were pre-soaked, I put them in their containers. I added the dye to them. In the case of the um, large, the six ounces of wool, I put that in the oven at um, 300 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour under aluminum foil so that it would steam and heat the bottle, the jars that I was um, using with the silk. I microwaved for two minutes at a time from two or three repetitions. Um, I've had a piece of um, plastic wrap on top of the bottles and they just sat. And as they cooled, they absorbed the dye. Then it was just a matter of rinsing out the vinegar that was both in the pre-wash or the pre-soak and the vinegar that was in with the, the, um, the acid dyes, rinse those out, put them on, on a drying rack to dry. And that's the basic process, nothing complicated, but I love the results. Now, one of the things that, um, you find when you do, especially the, the wool in the lock, I didn't open any of the locks up. I didn't fluff any of the fiber ahead of time. I left it in its lock structure. It's been scoured but that was it. And you don't get even dying. And that's the idea. So a little bit of dye I had in, in this case, I had no excess dye. I used just the right amount to get that lovely modeled color. The dye color really looks red. Um, it was actually called mahogany. And I was hoping to have a little bit more brown to it, but it is gorgeous. Um, a part of me <laughs> loved this so much that I didn't even want to add any of the silk to it. <laughs> so I, every time I do, um, a dye batch, I, I just, I love each batch individually. As of yet, I don't think I've really had a dye batch that I haven't been happy with. Um, that's the lovely thing about doing it in this, this style is you just get, you just don't know what you're going to get, but you tend to just get such beautiful combination of colors. And when it spins up, it's going to read red. It's going to read kind of a reddish mauve kind of color. 
but it's going to be beautiful. So that's what the fiber looked like. It's still in this lock structure. I haven't, I haven't flicked it open, haven't done anything with it. This section of it, I have opened it up and it's a beautiful, lovely cloud of fiber. And then the final third of it, I've been in the process of blending it and carting it into the roll logs to spin. Now the silk, as I showed a little earlier, the silk ended up just is lovely colors. And it's interesting. One of the things, if you really want to have um, fun experimenting with dye is take different fiber, um, co different contents, uh, uh, fiber contents and take the same dye and dye silk and wool and, um, maybe, um, mohair or so sheep's wool, mohair, maybe Angora rabbit, um, maybe nylon because anything, anything that basically will take an acid dye, dye them all with the same, um, dye concentration and see how the colors are different. Um, it never fails to amaze me how beautiful silk um, looks, but each one has a different texture. So a different, I shouldn't say texture, color texture, color feel to it. Um, so that's my fibers. So I sat here and I've been already carding, but I wanted to show the process of, and I'm going to use my um, hand carders. I did attempt this process using the drum carter. I didn't like it. Um, I couldn't control how the silk blended in with the wool. So others might have a different opinion of it, but for me, I found the hand carters to work the best at being able to control the amount of silk to um, wool ratio. Now I will tell you, I tend to use um, small cotton carters. Most of the fibers that I card are, are, are very, very fine. And so I like the cotton carders um, because they don't damage, um, they don't damage when, I, when I'm carding Angora. Um, and most of my CVM is, is so fine, it works beautifully with this. However, in doing this process, I found myself really wishing I had larger carders, um, <laughs> full size. I have, these are the small little, uh, kind of, they say sometimes kid size. It's less strain for me if I'm using the smaller size. But today, as I was working on these Rolox, I thought to myself, you know, it might be time to actually invest in a full size set of carders because in doing something like this, where I'm trying to blend, it would be nice to, to do a larger amount in one in one pass. But the process, and it's no different no matter whether I'm blending in silk and oil or if I am blending in sorry silk or if I'm blending in um, Angora, what it, it, it's the same process. I do the same layering type process. Um, I take my fiber, I drag it over the top of my comb. I mean, sorry, not comb. Ah, all the different words coming out. My, my carter, my card. I think that's the best way of putting it. I drag it over my card. Okay. Like that. So I then take, and a little goes a long way. I have enough silk here for oodles and oodles of projects in the future. So I take the silk and I just randomly put little tiny bits, oops, um, on. Now I have two options at this point. If I were doing something like Angora, I would certainly make sure to take some of this, um, and put on the top so that it's three layers. I found that in doing the silk, it didn't always necessarily need that, but I start opening up, blending in the silk in with the wool. All right, so 
Um, it takes, I found that it took about two to three passes. And usually after two to three passes, it was blended. Now I like, I like to roll using um, a dowel. I like to roll it off the carter. Okay. That simple. Now I did want to show there was another, there's another way of a, of a, a so if the fiber that you're using hasn't been, it's, it's, it's really still a lot in the lock. Sometimes when I was doing this, I found it easier to do. I'm going to load and I'm going to go a little heavier. Maybe one more clump. Okay. Now, another way of adding it to it is, is actually come in and take about half the fiber, opening it up, take about half the fiber off onto the second one. Then come in, put down some of the silk. I'll take a little bit of orange too. No, actually, I think we'll go with this golden pear. Like that. And then go over pulling it there and another pass and it really comes down to it 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 hides there we go see if we can get there there's the light it hides in there and you think oh well do I need to blend it more maybe there's some clumping, but you just do it a couple times when you feel like it's blended and you roll it off and there is the roll up. And here I have a picture here that I'll put up of them. Um, a whole the, the stack of them and so we just keep doing this 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 um, handful of wool um, it it had a few clumps in it so that's why I went ahead and did it that way each handful of wool might be a little bit different. Um, again, you just, it, it's a, it's, it's a personal choice how much you want to, to card it. The thing with, with spinning this specific prep of fiber is that you are creating, you're adding into it, you're adding into it all the stuff that we normally would try to pick out. You're, you're adding into it waste. Um, and whether it's cotton or it's, you could be trying to put in wool seconds or, you know, who knows, but you're basically taking little chopped up little pieces that would normally be something we'd want to pick out and you're putting it into the fiber. And when we go to the spinning wheel to spin it, we have to have great care <laughs> to not pick the stuff out as we spin. So another one done. It looks like I have enough fiber for one more left, but I'm going to cut away and get the spinning wheel out to show you how to spin this. Be right back. All right, so I have the wheel set up. And one of the things I wanted to show you at the beginning was I do have an example of a sweater that has the silk, oops, has the silk in it. And the speckled that you see 
is a combination of the silk oil and of the angora. Now, let me bring this up close to the camera for a moment. If you look at there, you'll see there's some light, you should be able to see some light blue. That light blue color, that's the silk. The whites that you're seeing is the angora that I mixed in. So, let's start spinning. The key to spinning when you've added in textural elements like this, because it's not just adding color, it is adding texture. The key to spinning it is doing everything in your ability to not pick out the lumps. You want to leave in all of the lumps because that's what you've just spent all this time carding into the fiber. If you now pick it out because you have these things kind of sitting on top of your, you know, or sitting just barely incorporated. I don't know if that's going to show. Um, if you pick it out at this point, then all that work that you've done kind of goes to waste. So this is a process that the long draw um, will benefit you practicing the long draw. It, it can be quite relaxing. It can also be very frustrating if you're like, oh my goodness, I really don't want that big chunk there, but you do want that big chunk there. The only thing I'll pick out and take out is if I run into vegetable matter that I didn't get out um, as I was uh, carding the fiber. So I'll take out hard bits. If, it's, if it feels like vegetable matter, if it feels really hard to the touch, um, like a little rock pebble type hardness, that I'll take out. But you don't want to take out all of the texture that you've just carded in. So it's just a matter of taking one roll log after another. And soon you'll have a textured yarn and I will put I still always get it backwards. Put it up to the side, a picture of what the bobbin looks like. But I now have some spinning to do. I think what I'm going to do, I've been thinking about this as I was working on um, carding earlier. I think for this yarn, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the other two thirds that I have I'm going to spin it without any silk added. So there'll be one single with silk, two singles without silk. I think I'll have enough texture with just the one single having had silk added. Um, because I want, I want some texture, I want some color, but I, I don't want to I don't want it to change the overall color and um, strength of my um, of my yarn. So in this case, I had quite a number, a, a quite a large area of silk. When I drafted, I just spread it apart down the down the um, the single that I'm creating. 
and it makes me think of <laughs> it's making me think a little bit of um, sprinkles on a cake when I when I see it in the bobbin so I'm going to cut away now and I'm gonna go get everything finished spinning this will probably be a little bit longer of a video when it's done because I want to bring the finished yarn to you so it'll probably be tomorrow or the next day when I get this done but I do want to show you what the finished yarn looks like so we'll cut away and future me will be here in just a moment <laughs> Well, I hope that spinning discussion inspired you to get out your fibers and to try something a little different. I was very pleased with the results. I am very pleased with the results. I have a lot of good color blend through it. It's subtle. It is a soft yarn. I decided to only go with a two ply because as I was spinning up the single that did not have the silk in it, I was noticing that the fiber was really fluffy and that I was probably going to get um, a thicker yarn than I had anticipated. So I just went with a two ply instead of a three ply. It's probably a sport weight, um, maybe, oh, probably 12 wraps per inch. I haven't, haven't measured it yet, haven't um, tested it, but it's soft. It's got lots of air. It's um, nice and squishy. And I think it's going to become a hat for me. I have other hats, but every hat is a little different. It's not just about, even if you use the same exact pattern, your gauge each day that you're knitting might be a little different, but definitely the yarn is going to change the way the hat turns out. And this is a nice fluffy woolen, um, and I think that it will make a nice scrunchy hat for me. I'm looking forward to at least giving it a try. We'll see what it does. I'm sure that if it turns out all right, I'll end up wearing it in a video. So I hope that this video has inspired you to um, try something new if you haven't tried adding in textures to your yarn. Uh, I know that there are many different ways um, that people can play with their fiber to add color, to add texture. The biggest thing is that you try, you play, you experiment, and then you take those experiments, the one skein um, projects that we spin up, and then make something with them. Whether it's a cat toy, or it's a hat, or it's a scarf, play with it. I know that there are yarns that I have spun that certainly work better for more of a craft, like a cat toy, other yarns work really well in knitting. Some I would love to see woven up. I've got to talk to my daughter uh, because while I have the looms, I'm really terrible at it. I'm slow, can't get my hands and feet to work together or my just hands and hands to work together. So the loom is, the, is, 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 my, um, <laughs> is my nemesis, I guess you could say. So, if you take the time to spin up some creative fun, I hope you take the time to turn it into something lovely. And if you love to do the spinning and don't want to knit up the one skein wonder, by all means, give it to a friend or one of your kids and say, here, go make something fun with it. The joy of experimenting, the joy of playing with color, it doesn't matter if we're old or young, it is a joy that is, I think, universal. As days become colder, cloudier, as winter threatens to take so much of the color out of our daily life, I think we should go into it with lots of woolly scarves lots of fun hats and more color than we could possibly know what to do with. <laughs> when we do that, I think we can put a smile upon our face and maybe in the process, 
help put a smile on someone else's face. I know certainly when I've worn a couple of my hats to the grocery store, there have been people smiling when they see me. There is nothing like trying to, um, trying to read the packaging of something you're going to purchase and having the bobble of your hat flop forward and hit you in the face. <sighs> yes, some hats don't lend themselves to grocery shopping as much as others, but there is joy. And I do think that there is always room in our lives to make up an experimental yarn, to try out an experimental scarf. Try something differently. Don't worry about if there's mistakes or unevenness. Just whip it together, throw it on, and have a little fun in doing so. So until next time, I hope you can find your own time and space to unwind with fiber and fabric and find joy in this changing season. Whether you're changing from summer into fall or winter into spring, I hope that you can find joy in the transition. I will see you again soon.